So I talked a little bit about the panoramic, how to kind of go ahead and create those 360 videos. And so what I'm going to do next is talk a little bit about interface design. And so in virtual reality, you now have access to basically a 360 sphere uh, and space all around you. And so traditionally in games, a lot of things are rendered just to these 2D elements. And you would kind of put things on the screen, maybe attach things to the upper left-hand corner, or just kind of position buttons and objects flatly in front of you. Um, but now with VR, you have the ability to kind of always look around and um, turn around and kind of experience the space much more by really putting yourself in there. And so there's a really good um, YouTube video that I like by a gentleman named Mike Alger. And he talks a lot about interface and UI design and kind of these different regions of where you want to place things. And so I want to pull up this picture here. And so what you see here is basically kind of um, a layout for how to position and how to think about some UI and what the, what the contents to put it in. So you'll see that basically there's this main content zone and that's a little bit outside, let's say your personal bubble, but not too far away that you can't really see it or understand it. And so that's what's, go, that's what's gonna be positioned in front of you. And then on the side, you have these peripheral zones. And just like real life, you know, we can, we can see what's kind of at the edges of our vision. And it does make us a little bit curious. And maybe that's where we could present some cues on, you know, telling the player to maybe turn around or, or look at something differently. Um, and then lastly, behind us, we have this um, curiosity zone. And so that's kind of this area where when we first start the experience or application, we don't necessarily know what's there, but because we're in VR, you know, we know something is there or we know we can look to see if anything is there. And so I really like this kind of example here and um, utilizing this kind of main content zone for putting UI elements and interaction. The other thing you'll notice is that this is uh, a circle and you know, this is this kind of 360 you know spatial mapping around you and so understanding and thinking about that when designing or building any sort of uh, interface in VR is always kind of important kind of utilizing that space all right and so in order to start doing that what I'm going to do is create a couple buttons and then use this uh, curved UI system and show you guys how that works all right so in my scene, I'm gonna go ahead and move my camera just back here a little bit, just so we can get the position, have maybe a little nicer view. And one thing to note is that now that I'm gonna start doing uh, some interface stuff and things like that, I wanna make sure that I remove this VR capture. Because if you remember, uh, if I go ahead and hit the play button here, you'll see that it's gonna try to start capturing this again. It's uh, pretty easy and convenient that I can just uh, abort it. Um, but for now, I'm just going to uncheck this and kind of deactivate this script because I no longer want it to, to capture anything um, like I was previously. All right, so let's go ahead and start creating some UI. So I'm just going to go to create a button. And so if you use Unity's UI system before, you know that it starts out by default in screen space. And so you'll see me zooming out here, and that's because this canvas right now is relative to what my screen is rendering. And so my screen is this game view down here. And as I, um, as I kind of move this up and down, you'll see this uh, canvas size change. And so right now my button's kind of anchored to the center and so it's actually going off screen. Um, but in order to make a VR UI, what I wanna do is keep everything in world space and to think about that kind of space around the player. All right, so in order to do that, I'm gonna to go to my canvas and change this rendering mode. So you can see it starts out in screen space overlay. We also have screen space camera, if you want to assign it to a camera, but for this case, we're gonna use world space. So it's gonna get a bit smaller here. And now uh, its position in the world is actually uh, important here. And so I'm gonna pull it up a little bit and try to find my button, kind of zero this out. There it is, and so now things are 
definitely a bit too big. And so I'm going to start kind of scaling them down here. And my canvas, I'm going to use the rect tool to make it a little bit smaller. Something like that. All right. And again, now that this is world, I need to consider, you know, how this exists or where it lives in the world. And you can see now it's kind of behind this and it's still a pretty big button. So it's still a bit too large for our needs. So I'm just gonna kind of scale this down some more. Let's do something like that. And then my button, I can scale that down a lot as well. All right, that was the button. I wanna grab the whole canvas here like that. All right, so you can see that my camera is way back here and it's at kind of a negative six. So I'm actually gonna zero this out a bit uh, in order to kind of match that zone that we saw earlier. So I'll raise it a little bit. Um, so you can see on the Z, there we go, we're at zero. And now for our canvas, uh, we're at kind of six on the Z here. So that's still kind of in that general zone right there. And now in order to make this UI a little bit kind of more make sense spatially, um, what we can do is go ahead and add that, um, the UI script that, that does the, the uh, curved UI. So curved UI settings here at the bottom, right there. And so by default, you'll actually notice that it, it starts to curve right away. And it has a couple cool settings on here to make it um, you know, more or less curved or kind of inversely do that. And then the other cool thing is that as I duplicate these buttons, if I add another one here like that, it'll actually kind of curve around um, around that shape that I've, I've selected there dependent on its position. So for this one, I kind of want to do something like that. And you, so you'll see as the player, you get a little bit of that curvature and you can kind of put yourself in the interface. So maybe move it down a little bit, something like that. And that curve looks a little extreme, so I'm gonna to kinda of tone it back a little bit, like that. All right, and so you can see here that, you know, this is this is the main camera and this is the player here, and now we're kind of in that that spatial understanding, and with this curved UI, we can, we can have buttons uh, all around us a little bit. And so if we wanted, we could you know, go a little wild and start making a lot of buttons. We could also um, duplicate this canvas if we wanted and, and put some behind the player. And we wouldn't, we'd probably want to rotate it around a little bit like that, but we could also just kind of do that inverse there. And so if you were setting up some sort of system where you want the player to turn around a bunch or select options uh, in front of you and behind you, this would be kind of a good setup for that. And just to show you guys a little bit how this looks in VR, I'm gonna go ahead and enable VR and uh, hop in here for a moment. So I'll go in the player settings. We have this XR setting. So I am in 2017.2, and we've now renamed some of these uh, settings here. So virtual reality supported, open VR, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit the play button. So you can see down down at the bottom now that I have these kind of buttons. They're large enough that I can kind of understand where they are, but I also feel like they're kind of in this spatial understanding and they're not just kind of flat billboards off on the wall. And so this helps just, just really kind of emphasize, you know, and give like a, a more natural look to, to some of these buttons here. Uh, I happen to be using the HTC Vive right now. All right, and so for now, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one from behind, but I'm gonna walk through setting up these buttons to um, be usable on the Vive. And one thing I wanna know about this curved UI is that it actually has a variety of um, example scenes that it ships with for a bunch of different headsets. So we have a Google VR one for Daydream and Cardboard, an Oculus Touch, Steam VR. Uh, and then some other gaze detections and things like that that are also helpful dependent on the uh, VR platform that you're targeting. All right, and so for now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab this controller laser pointer uh, that's in this curved UI folder, 
and drag it out there. And then I'm actually gonna drag my Vive camera rig that comes from the Steam VR plugin um, in order to get these button mappings and things working. So I'm gonna search for a camera rig and then just go ahead and drop this there. And so you will notice that right now this camera doesn't have these post-processing effects and that's not really a big deal. Uh, I could go ahead and re-add them, but we're actually just gonna be using those 360 videos and those videos actually have those post-processing effects uh, baked into them. All right, so someone asked if there's a Gear VR one. Um, right now there isn't, I believe. Um, you could use kind of the Google VR one and then you could also do some gaze detection, but I do know that um, that Google v uh, that Gear VR recently came out with a controller as well, and the setup would be somewhat similar um, for for at least for this this curved UI system. All right, so I have my camera rig, and I'm just going to go ahead and put this laser pointer underneath the right controller there, and I'm going to turn off my other camera since we're using this new one, like that. And you can see the color grading and all those post processing effects kind of go away. Um, with that and so the next thing is I need to set up my uh, event system and things like that to make sure that it works with the Vive and so when you add UI you get this event system object that gets spawned in the scene and so if I go up to my canvas here you'll see that now there's a little bit of a, a warning here on the curved UI settings and I can override it here and then once I override it now I have some options to select my specific controller uh, or uh, or control scheme that I want there. So I'll do Vive on the right controller. That's where I put it under. And so now uh, I, I do want to make sure I change these buttons so I know that something's actually happening. So the highlighted color I'll make kind of a pink and the pressed color will make maybe like a teal there. All right, I'm gonna save my scene and go ahead and hit play and then I'm gonna turn my controllers on and see what we can get here. All right, so you'll notice right away that uh, on my right controller, um, I can, I now have this laser pointer, it actually kind of snaps there, so you can see it going kind of infinitely into the distance there, but when we have a button, and then this is me hitting the trigger button to make some selections. Um, so yeah, you can basically see that uh, we have that laser pointer and the kind of setup for that was again just grabbing this canvas and this is just a normal Unity canvas and uh, any of the UI elements that you would have before or anything that you've made previously by just attaching this curved UI settings script to it, setting up uh, some of the control methods and then adding some options to this event system. And so this is what's controlling uh, you can see the control method there with the Vive, and this is what's handling uh, the input module from that. All right, so is there any questions about kind of having using uh, that curved UI? Uh, can you choose multiple controllers? Um, so off the bat, uh, it doesn't have functionality um, for that, but... Uh, or sorry, it does. Yeah, you can use these controllers for the control method, but I believe you will need to override um, kind of how this laser pointer works with potentially uh, adding two of them there or um, having an option to kind of turn them on and off on the controllers. So someone asked about some cross-platform ability, the Daydream controller. So yeah, it does have Google VR support. Uh, and again, the, the one thing I will note is I was doing... Um, I was doing a lot of work here with some native Unity integration before pulling in the Steam VR, and basically you can get input events and things like that uh, from from kind of any controller, and there is uh, some options for that. And basically, what this uh, what is happening here with this input module is it's kind of just uh, en emulating and piping some normal UI events back to. Um, back to the Unity UI system. So, you know, the, the controller support could potentially be endless. You might need to uh, build up a little bit uh, of a wrapper yourself there for that. 